G'day, how you going? This is Ian Apples here, your acrylic guru from Australia. Welcome to my video channel here. I'm glad you can join me. Now today we're going to do a, a landscape layout on this canvas here. I'll just give you the sizes in centimetres and inches there. Alright, and we'll also uh, get some colours going up the screen. That way you can pause it and write them down. And watch this video a few times so you know what you're going to be painting along with. Then you can get yourself set up and get ready to paint along with me, all right? So come on over here and we'll have a look at what we're gonna do, all right? Okay, I've just lightly drawn in a horizon line and the big rocky island here, and just where my water's going to be, okay? And we're gonna have a sky as well with some beautiful clouds. All right, I've got me flowing white paint here. It's soft student craft paint, poster paint, whatever you wanna call it. It's just not the good quality artist paint out of a tube. It's just from a bottle. And I want to condition my sky area. So I've got the retarder mixed in there. If you don't know what retarder is, it'll slow down the drying time of acrylic paint. Okay, so our sky is going to be here. Now, I know me rocks there, but I'm just going to do the sky area for now. And I can paint that rock in front of it later. That way I'll get all the colours flowing across the canvas the way I want. So I'm getting all this pushed into the tooth of the canvas. And those of you that might not know what the teeth of a canvas is, you know, we can't assume because we know something that everybody else knows it. There's some people out there that might not know what the tooth of a canvas is. That's the cloth, the weaving cloth, the lumps and bumps in the weaving cloth. We call it the tooth. Now, without cleaning that brush, because I want it to lighten up the blue, I've got phalo blue. I'm going to load that up on both sides of this brush. And we'll start at the top, get the top the darker side of the blue and we're going to bring it down to the horizon line and with a bit of luck it's going to come a bit lighter and if it doesn't come a bit lighter well then you make it lighter okay it's that easy and I'll show you how to make it lighter if you don't know now see the edges how they're not quite there just uh, 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 just do that and then stroke them back that way you've got the colour everywhere. Now, yes, we would like a bit more lighter down the bottom because it is a bit heavy in blue. So we'll pick up some more of this white, but we might need some more because this is, yeah, see, it's very, very blue. Okay, I've just picked up some more of that flowing white to get the, there we go. And that's gonna sink into that blue, lightening it up to give a realistic sky color blue. And down to our horizon line, which is a lot lighter, which creates the sphere, the atmosphere in the sky, and giving you that sphere shape. So when you're looking out there, you've got that sphere, the dome, whatever you call it. You know what I mean. All right, now I want to make the polluted horizon sky area. So I've got some permanent alinsarin. I just want a little bit in my grey, just to mix up that colour. All right, and that'll give our, you can do this another way, but this is just a simple, easy way to show you beginners how to get this polluted color, all right? Okay, my horizon line's somewhere here, so I want this just coming up the painting like so. Start from the bottom. And I'm pushing it in. Now this, you don't want this very loud. You don't want it really bright and out there. You just want it, a hint of it. It's subtle, less is more. Okay, now I'm just using a small filbert here. Find a brush that works for you. And I'm pushing that up into there. And I've got that mauvey, purpley, gray color in the horizon line. Now, we're gonna put some clouds into this sky. So I'll pick up some white, titanium white out of the tube and we'll create our clouds. So we'll create some, I'm gonna have that island about there so I don't wanna to be too much. I'm just gonna put something here because this is gonna be blended down to the horizon. 
So I want a mass of white there, just like that maybe. And we want to grab a blending brush and a paper towel and tickle and blend that down into that atmosphere there, leaving the top there. But don't leave the top the way it laid from your brush. If it needs changing and manipulating in a way, like here I feel, can you see that? Yeah, I look at my monitor there. I'm gonna manipulate that a bit. Just push it and there we go. Tickle the top there. And this can be really blended down into that horizon there. And that's long way away, way, way, Cloud. Beautiful, nice and easy. Now I think we'll put a, we're gonna have that rock there. So I want something just filling up this bit of the sky there. So I've cleaned that brush and we wanna create the shape of our next cloud. So I've loaded up my brush both sides. I find fan, using a fan brush is my favorite. You might have a filbert or round whatever works for you. So, where's my monitor, you can see that? Yeah, so I wanna come out about here. So I wanna come from the, the background and this is coming over the head, over the head, make it, twist it, lift it up there, off to the, the painting. It's coming over the head. These are quite easy ones to do, okay? And see this brush, see what I've done there? I've moved some of the blue into it, just like that. We'll grab our blending brush and we'll blend this into the sky. And we want to give this a bit of bit of base, bit of body. We're going to put some weather in this cloud. I love putting weather in my clouds. That's not too bad. That can feather up there. Just like that. See how I feathered that up into there? Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. And then we'll add some more. Now, I've grabbed a smaller fan brush and I want to put some grey weather into that cloud that I've just put on there, that large body cloud. Okay, so I want to sort of come this way, pick up a bit more. And it's mainly the base, like there. Grab your blending brush, wipe it, it's important to wipe it. And we wanna twist that gray into the white there. How's that looking? Beautiful. There we go. That's pretty much my version of clouds. I always do my clouds like this. There's so many ways you can do clouds and learn them. All right. And then of course, just whack on your yumminess. So we could probably put some yumminess. God damn, where are we? The yumminess is the vibrant white. And I want some out here too, just something I can. So what I'm doing is I'm balancing out the canvas. Right, I'll get this yumminess blended into that gray a bit. Leave a lot of the vibrancy there. And there we go. And these can be just blended out into some floating lost clouds. You know, you get those little lost whispery ones floating in the sky, that's all they are. Twist them around a bit. How's that looking in the monitor? That's looking all right. Because see, I've counteracted the balance now. That's over here, because I'm gonna have my big island here, okay? Okay, now we wanna put the water in, and then our mountain, okay? So this hasn't been touched yet. I've just brushed those hard edges off that paint, so we don't get a line under there, all right? Now I've just put some more of that flow white, and there's still a bit of that retarda there. I wanna get the area where our water's gonna be. Now it's this purple I put on, we need that down the horizon line, so don't go too high up, and that's, we're gonna be roughly about here. And downwards. So I wanna just prep the canvas with this paint. 
so as our blues and everything is gonna merge nicely. Now I haven't worried about making that horizon line very dark. Just there where the water's going to be. Beautiful. Now I'm gonna just wipe the brush. I haven't washed it. I wanna pick up some of the blue. Because we wanna come from blue to turquoise. Now while I've put that white on there, this blue, you will see it's going to become lighter. The more you muck with it, the lighter it'll get. Try and keep, oh, I'm going up a bit. Slow down, Ian. There we go. That's the value I want. Okay. And I want to just come somewhere to there. Turn my brush around. Those lines look all right. I think I might just leave them in there. They look good. They might get lost when I'm blending and scrumbling, though. Okay. Now I'm going to wash this brush and add the turquoise. So we're going to pull some turquoise. And I'm grabbing a little bit of white there to lighten it up because we don't want it too bright. And this is going to go from the blue. Okay. And the white on there is going to lighten it a bit more. Now don't come too far down because we've got to leave a little bit for sand colour, okay? So we want to get this about there. Kiss it to the blue. Just like so. Because this is going to be a bit of a bend. Pretty much there. I'll come off the page there, sorry. Now I want to merge that with the blue, just like that. I'll get some of the blue down there. <clears throat> Excuse me. There we go. Just like that, I'll exit it down to drag some of it. And we'll just get some of that there like that. I don't like this sudden... There we go. I'll pull that down as well. There we go. Now, we want to get some sand. So I've just cleaned that synthetic brush. And I want some very light yellow ochre in that white just to create my beach sand. I'm quite happy using these tones for my beach sand. All right. And I want to paint this into the turquoise without destroying it too much. Just like that. And now I will manipulate it the turquoise and that into each other. What your brush if you need to. Where are we going? I want to bring about, I want to bring some more of that into the water there. Just, am I, how's it? Yeah, that's it. Just into there. Wipe the brush. Just so as I can. There we go. I want just a few dark patches here. So I'm going to pick up some of the turquoise, flatten it out onto my palette down there, and put a bit of the blue with it. Phalo blue. And easingly does it. I just want some mm, very... Just to indicate reef whatever there. This is like Thailand, so my son was at the Pifi Islands years ago. I think it was there. Him and his partner stayed there and you know I love all that scenery. Unfortunately I didn't stay there. So we're just getting this some darker elements under the water there before we seal it. Okay, I have some burnt umber here, just picking it up on a flat brush. No medium mixed with it or nothing, it's just straight out of the tube. I might have to dry my painting first, let's see how this is going to go. So I probably want a rock here, just something sticking out the water. And what's happening, it's sort of sticking, it sort of isn't. Oh, what's going on here? Frustration, frustration. Well, that's why I'm here to show you what you can and can't do before you start painting. So I'm gonna dry that now. Now I didn't dry it thoroughly, it's still a bit tacky. It's just dried enough so this paint will stick because I've gotta put the white rocks 
I mean, not the rocks, the white foam on the water as well, okay? So I'm just getting some rocks here. Might get something just coming off the page here, something a bit bigger. I didn't dry that bit, did I? And then I want some pretty much on the edge here as well where the water's meeting the sand. And these I'll, I'll simply two-tone two some of these up. So I want them a bit flatter than that, if anything. I want them like oval shapes. So I want mainly just this corner rocked up. Just like that. Pretty simple. It's an easy way to do it. And I'll show you. We'll get some white. There we go. And we can add some light values to these rocks. But dry them if it's... You'd have to dry them first. And then I'll just do the same with these. Just so as you'll see what's happening here. I mean, you can load the brush up light and dark on opposite sides and do these in one foul swoop. Just adding the deliberate lighter values to here now, to these rocks, which is the same colour, just with white added into it. And like I said, dry your rocks first before you do this, otherwise you won't be able to see like I'm getting here, I can't quite see what's happening. But it's just putting lighter values with the darker values there. Now some of that light colour, I'm just slightly fading from those rocks and scrumbling some darker areas there just to look like some deeper dirty elements under that water there. Because now we're ready to put the, the, the foam and the surface on top of that water, okay? Okay, we're going to pick up, I'm just picking up a flat brush, picking up some of the dirty titanium white out of the tube and work out where you want your foam. So I want something coming off the page over these rocks. Let's do a bit at a time. Put that on there and I want to scrumble the, the top side horizontally back into the water, okay? Don't do too much because if you do too much like I've just done there, it's not quite going to scrumble for you. There we go. This is subtle. We're not doing massive splashing waves here. Just something subtle. Just something to put water surface on top there. How's that looking in the monitor? Not too bad, we're getting there. So I'll pick up some more now. And I want to kind of lay some of it here. Just that'll do. Let's quickly get that back into the ocean side. See that line? You want to get rid of that hard line. If this was wetter, it'll be working a bit differently and better, but because it's a lot drier, I've got to put a little bit on and scramble at a time, okay? Probably put some tiniest bits of... Um, Water movement around there. Oh, not that damn big, Ian. I'll just subtle that up. It's too much. It's got surface around there. I'm just going to keep gingerly bringing it around to the left hand side of the painting there because what we can do once we've done this is um, 
just really make the the bottom edge of that line that we've just put on more intense with brighter white okay just dance on some this doesn't have to be scrambled back this is the light actually hitting it now okay some here maybe some out there very gingerly do this don't do them too hard can probably put little bits out here all right just to sit that water down i've grabbed some of the yellow oxide and the burnt umber mixed it very liquidy like and we want the slightest skinniest shadow line under here just to sink that hard white edge down on the side where it's hitting the sand now I'm twisting this brush as I go I'm wiggling it acting nervous pick up some more because it's not transferring enough no more reload it and come along here the thinner you can get this the better now this is a procedure you can probably just practice as well doing these little lines on stuff now we're ready to put our island landmass in here, so I want to map that in. Everything's been dried, so I'll just dampen my brush a little bit. I've got some raw umber here, okay, and we want this to just map in our island slash rock. Where are we there? Yep. Now I want to come up to about here, okay, and I want to start coming off the painting about there, come up and down. And pretty much clip it down there okay so that's pretty much where I want to go so I'm gonna just get the top rough ready doesn't matter because it's all going to be have some greenery in there now I want this a bit beyond the water level there Now I've dried that and the raw umber, I'm going to mix some white in it now because I want lighter values. Very much the sandy rock colour. I wonder what a bit of yellow oxide might look like in the mix. Yep, not bad. A bit of yellow oxide, that's the one I want. Because I'm looking for that limestone-y sort of rock colour I suppose. And the majority of this is quite bright. That's just the blocking part. Now, the bottom is a bit dark, so what I'm going to do is come... I'm just scratching it in with this flat brush, a bit like that, and I want to just sort of come up for the time being. Now, you can use a knife for this if you want. I just want to teach a beginner a very basic easy way to do this okay that's going to have trees coming down it as well so i'll get the top and i'm scratching it in from the top scratching it in leaving bits of open darker areas there now like i said the majority of this is going to be a bright colored rock get this gray mixed in with some of that just to change the dirty areas of it. I'll come back to that dark a bit later. Now I want some grey scratched in here. Just like that. Does it look grey onto the screen? I hope so. I'm just going to pick up the grey on its own because I want a, like a bit of a darker corner there. And the bits of brown that are left is just creating actual shadows here and there. This is the actual colour of the rock. A 
and then we can fine tune the darker values. I've picked up some of the um, darker color again and I want to get some different values in here. It's a little bit lighter than what the mapping color was. I've just put a little bit of this color with, with it so it's not so stark. Okay, we want to get that raw umber and trace in maybe some, I'm going, I'm doing it on an up and down I didn't dry it yet because I wanted it to sort of scrumble together if it's going to help. Just grab some more raw umber onto the thing and under the paintbrush and I want to scoot up. Just find cracks within here. Just make it look, because you need the darks with all this to make it look real. And this is another procedure you can probably practice as well if you don't think you can handle this. Practice these procedures and then do the whole painting once you've learnt things. It's great. I want to kind of just get this scrumbled in a bit better here so it looks like it's going in and under. Like so type of thing. That's sort of doing what I want it to do, yeah. And I'll merge that up a bit. How's that look in my monitor? Yeah, that's getting there, getting there. Now I'm just dried all that and I'm just putting some grey on here to create other bits of shadow. This is a, just a grey out of the tube. If you don't have a grey out of the tube, you can easily mix up a black and white to get the grey you want. And I want some sort of darker value up here just on the edge coming into the painting now I've just got the white a bit of white and dirtied with this mix that we made earlier and we're just going to come along and highlight bits and pieces in here this is what the light is actually hitting so it's like a very very dirty white okay and we'll put some up in the corners like I want some of this this is where the lights hitting so we've laid up this mass of a Thailand type sort of island thing here I want some light hitting here just going up because I'm going to have some greenery coming down there and the, uh, this shadowy bit here I want to create some light above that so it looks like it's coming outwards I suppose there we have that too much no that's all right that, that'll do it see the lights and darks complement each other I'm just I'm not even thinking before we get too carried away I want to pick up a bit of white on my knife and carefully have the water not too thick hitting the bottom of this island and then I'm going to grab my flat fan brush because I want to turn that line that I've just put in there into film just hitting the bottom of it softening it oh yeah that's happening beautifully now I'm going to go along a bit wipe it back and come from this side now just so it doesn't look like a big thick hard line that's good titanium white out of the tube i use there and see the flat brush with a bit of water in it allowed that to turn into film okay just like that that dark color i mixed up with the turquoise and the blue i've just got some on a um What do you call it? Filbert. It's more filbert brush. Just something, I might have to put that white line back because I forgot to get some sort of depth here. It's not a it's not a mirror image reflection like you'll get on a beautiful lake, because this is the ocean, but we're gonna get some sort of value under the water there. Need some sort of reflection there. Otherwise the detail police are gay and Yeah, alright. 
Now we're just going to finish it off by putting the green on our island there. And to keep it simple, I'm going to just map it in with forest green. So I've dampened my brush. Now I've got this flat brush and it's all flared out. It makes a beautiful scenery brush for me. So use what brush you feel is going to make a nice scenery for you. And I want to sort of come up. Now this is, you're mapping in the green here now. It's a bit dark. Don't go too solid at the top. Keep some stuff open like that, okay? Canopy tops poking up. And I want to bring this down. Now everything is dried on here. And while I'm using this brush, it makes for a beautiful scenery. You know? And we're going to come down the mountain. Dribble down the mountain. Is it a mountain or a rock or an island? I don't know. A mountain. And our photo will come down somewhere there. This is what they're like in the islands in Thailand there. They look beautiful. If you've never been there, go for a holiday. And we'll put some down here as well. I want to sort of... Stamp it all on. They would, they're, they're classed as islands, but they're, they're like big limestone, rocky sort of things. Now we're going to blow dry this and add some other colours. Now we want to just load our brush up with the forest green again and grab some of the yellow and start making the lighter value what we've just put up there, like our yellow green. Now that's a cadmium yellow light. I will just... Wet the brush a bit, oh that's too much. Just so we get a beautiful transfer happening there. Now let's see how we're gonna go with this. We'll get some uh, this highlighted. How's that looking in the monitor there? Not too bad, not too bad. Now I want some darks mainly on this side because if anything, the light's hitting from this side I'd say. So we want a, just a little bit of lights, where are we? Just tracing in there, all the way down, maybe there. That's just so as we can got something to set back. And then I want to bring my trees. Find a brush that does it good for you. I love this little brush, it works fine for me. I find. And we're just virtually stamping on where the light's hitting all our trees. Leaving some dark pockets. See how I've left darks there? It's creating the ups and downs and where the light's hitting. Now we're going to grab just the yellow now and make a real lighter value of that. And we want to hit the very tops. Don't put too much of this on. How's that looking? See, it's just there. I just want to hit that side of things where the light's probably hitting it. And we can use this to separate our bushes. You can probably really detail this with a smaller brush the way I've done some detailing work and this is virtually creating the shape of our foliage everywhere not too much of this I've learned in the past too much of this gives it that stupid look it just looks ridiculous and you learn by your mistakes, don't you? How's that looking? I don't like those silly dark spots here. I could probably get just the littlest of something happening in there just to break up that pattern there. Now I have mixed the raw umber with what was left on my brush. I just want some form of um, dead undergrowth within these greens just to give it that real like 
hopefully. <laughs> Give me a look what it's looking like. Yeah, that's all right. Just to stop that foliage from floating, I've mixed some black with that forest green there. Don't want it blobby on your brush, you just want it enough to transfer. And see, we want to put bits of shadow under our tree on the rock, just so it... Don't go and put a big solid dark line around all of it. All right, see what I'm doing here. Work out where it needs some shadow. Squint your eyes. And it kind of, well it doesn't kind of, it bloody well does. It sits it down. And then we'll put a signature on this and frame it. I reckon this will look nice in a frame, being a beach scene, water scene, ocean scene. They look beautiful in a white bordered frame. Okay, I'll just autograph it down here in the corner. Be sure to look at the links in the description below. All my tutorials are for sale. And there's one for my art group page. You can follow me on Facebook. Also, we're going to cross over to Adriana Somberg and see what she's up to. Hey, it's Adriana Somberg from Jupiter, Florida, USA, and I am shopping for more canvas. And now it's time for Ian to whack a frame on it. Thank you, Adriana, from all the way over there in Florida. Yeah, that don't look too shabby now, does it, eh? We've got our nice sky horizon going back back far there we've got a Thai island here with their beach bit of rocks and doodars in the water there all right all right I hope you like what you've seen today if you have tell your friends but if I've offended you and you don't like what I'm up to you tell everybody all right all the best goodbye good luck and good on you